All right, guys, this is lesson 25, the Nintendo 64, just for your submissions. Uh, what is your favorite console ever? Give me a jot down, give me a reason, you can give me a game, okay? But definitely tell me what's your favorite console. Reason I'm asking, this one is mine. I love the Nintendo 64. In late November 1995, Nintendo finally unveiled its 64-bit cartridge-based console at its Shushinkai convention at Makuhari Messi. The show featured only Nintendo products and was less popular than E3. Nintendo's next generation console underwent three name changes by the time it was unveiled. First, it was known as Project Reality. Then it was known as Ultra 64. The final console was called Nintendo 64, or its abbreviated form, N64. Although the Nintendo had released many details about the new console during the months leading up to the unveiling, no information was ever leaked about the system's controller. Created by Genyo Takeda and Nintendo's research and development team number three, Nintendo 64 had a new and revolutionary three-handled controller. Okay, now a lot of you may say, well, how could there be three handles? What do you hold? What do you use? Well, take a look here. You have your directional pad. So you put your hand on the outside for games that required the directional pad, you put your hand in the center for the joystick, your start button's in the center, and then you have A and B in directionals with some triggers on the top, and there's a Z trigger underneath the center handle. You'll see when I bring it in. Okay. The D-pad was especially good for fighting games. Uh, it did not read how hard you pushed. It simply noted when you pushed down on it and your character would move at a constant speed. Whereas the analog lever, on the other hand, had responded to pressure, okay? If you push slightly, you would inch forward. If you pushed way over, you would run. This is similar to our controller styles or joystick styles today. We tried a motion sensor wristwatch style controller. We made a prototype and applied for a patent. Everything was good, but players didn't understand the internal mechanism and had trouble controlling it. So we abandoned it. And what they brought back was nicknamed the Boomerang Controller. Hiroshi Yamauchi was clearly proud of the new controller. In a speech given the first day of the convention, he said, if you think this is just another game pad, then you know nothing about video games. The Super Famicom, Game Boy, and Nintendo 64 were the three products on display at this new convention. Most people crammed into the uh, Nintendo 64 section and took turns rotating to play the only two games that were on display, Super Mario 64 and Kirby's Air Riders. Kirby's Air Riders was a last minute addition uh, and even Howard Lincoln himself was unaware that this was being shown as a demo. Kirby's Air Ride received very poor reviews and the project was later scrapped for now, but they bring it back ultimately. Super Mario 64 on the other hand was revolutionary. Nintendo ships 300,000 consoles on June 23rd. Only three games were ready for launch on that day. Super Mario 64, Pilot Wings, and a Japanese chess game called Shogi. Nintendo sold all 300,000 consoles, plus 300,000 copies of Super Mario, and almost 200,000 copies of Pilot Wings. Judging by the quiet Sunday morning launch, observers might have misjudged how excited people were for the N64. Japanese fast food chains were selling Mario milkshakes and a new television game show based on Nintendo 64 appeared on TV. Nintendo planned to ship an additional million consoles by the end of summer. The American launch was much more phenomenal than the Japanese. Okay. Nintendo made a press event of the shipping process by inviting a television crew to film pallets of consoles being loaded on a plane to be delivered to the country. The event of N64 became national news and Nintendo released this console September 29th. Having already pre-sold their entire inventories, most stores handed out the consoles on the 27th. All 500,000 units shipped to the United States were sold by the weekend's close. Okay. Nintendo originally planned to release a very limited number of consoles to the U.S., but after realizing it was a vital market, they scrambled to create more. To accommodate the red-hot U.S. market, Nintendo rerouted consoles that were being shipped to Japan and Europe. In the U.S., demand held strong, but a problem that plagued the Japanese market was becoming too apparent in the U.S. The predictions of doom and gloom appeared to have been correct. 
Due to the cartridge format, there simply were not enough games for the new console, and many games that came out were expensive or small. Super Mario 64 and Pilot 64 sold well, but others like Cruise in the USA did not. The Nintendo 64 was built in many variations. This kept the hardware unique and fun. Its four-player capabilities encouraged gamers to play with each other, each bringing their own brightly colored controller with them. The Nintendo 64 was released in 19 variations, along with many unique attachments and tech. Okay, if you see all these controllers here below, I actually collect these myself, so I do have almost every color in existence. Here's all your different consoles. Standard uh, charcoal. Jungle Green, Ice Blue, Grape Purple, Fire Orange, Smoke Black, Watermelon Red, Clear White and Blue, Clear White and Red, Pikachu, Pikachu Light Blue, Pikachu Orange, Pokemon Stadium, Gold, Die Hawks, The Jusco 30th, All Nippon Airlines, Hyundai Comboy, and the IQ. Okay, so there's many different attachments, many different styles of this console, which kept it fun. Um, we're going to learn more about the N64 for the rest of this week. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.